Howdy hobby farmers, Bevan Cohen here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a do-it-yourself rain barrel and drip line irrigation system. The first step for making a do-it-yourself rain barrel is, uh, well, choosing the rain barrel, right? Now most folks you're going to see are using something like this. This is a little 50 gallon drum uh, that we could turn into a rain barrel. You can purchase these fabricated, absolutely pre-made and ready to go, but it's also quite easy to build one yourself. Now all you gotta do is get yourself one of these 50 gallon barrels and you're gonna wanna drill a hole into it to attach the hose bib down below. This is where your water's gonna come out. At the top, as you can see, what we've got here is an open mesh screen system and that's very important and we'll talk about that in a little bit, why we need that to filter our water out. And this is where we're gonna run our gutter into, this thing's gonna fill up probably, I mean one rain. 50 gallons isn't really as much water as it sounds like. So here at Small House Farm, what we're using is a 250 gallon IBC tote. Much larger, well, about five times as large, right? Um, and this thing still fills up pretty quickly. What you can see that we've done here is uh, we've taken some old gutter. I've probably got, oh, it's two eight foot lengths, I guess. So about 16 feet of gutter, repurpose this. This is leftovers from when we put some gutters on the house. Uh, we run these uh, gutters up here on the pole barn. What's nice about using the pole barn here is I've got that metal corrugated roofing. If you're working with a gutter system that you're putting on your house, and you've got asphalt shingles, you're gonna get a lot of debris coming off of those shingles that are gonna kind of build up in your rain barrel over time. And that is why this filter system is very important. Having this screen here to keep the debris out of your water is great. Not only the asphalt debris, little bits of stuff from your shingles, but even a buildup of leaves over time is not ideal in your rain barrel system. So making sure that we can filter out all that sort of stuff is gonna make long-term success for our rain barrel system. Regardless of the size of the rain barrel that you're using, whether it's a 50 gallon or a 250 gallon tote, doesn't matter at all. The most important thing here is that we wanna make sure that we get this barrel up off the ground, right? Um, now it's, it's the gravity that's gonna create our water pressure when we wanna use the rain barrel to water our gardens. So we gotta get it up off the ground. The further off the ground you're gonna go, the more water pressure that you're gonna have. Uh, what we're doing here for our IBC tote, because when this thing's full of water, I guess I don't know exactly how heavy it is, but it is very heavy. So we have to take the time to make sure we build a nice, sturdy surface for this. This has got to be safe, otherwise this could get dangerous. So you can see what we've done here is we've actually built a system of cinder blocks uh, that we've staggered as we've built it up. Um, and we've got it, you know, three cinder blocks off the ground. And this is going to produce just enough water pressure to water our gardens. Up above, like I mentioned, you can see the gutter system that we've got. We've run a gutter across the pole barn down through the downspout and into the top of the IBC tote. Uh, it's gonna take one good rain, and even though, even though I've only got 16 feet of gutter, one good rain is gonna fill this baby right up to the top. So when it's not raining and the gardens are getting pretty dry, I got plenty of water to water all my plants with. Now down below here, this is where our water's gonna come out. If we were using a 50 gallon barrel and uh, a hose bib, it would be set up perfectly, obviously, to hook a hose onto. But the uh, drain valve here on my tote is much larger than that. So I've had to get an adapter piece uh, to make it small enough to attach a hose to. I could just run one single hose right off of this guy, run it right out to my gardens, and that would work just fine. But for our purposes, we needed a little bit more control over where the water was going. So I've got a four-way uh, splitter right here attached to that. So I can hook a multitude of different hoses up to it. So I can run this hose, open these valves up, and choose which row in the garden is gonna get the water. Cause you know, we're growing a number of different plants out here. They have different watering needs. Um, so they're not kind of on different schedules. And this allows me to have complete control over which plants get water when. Now here's something that's pretty cool about the system using this four-way splitter. Now I, I'm pretty dedicated to using these drip lines, especially with my tomatoes. I don't want any overhead watering and I want to use this drip line whenever I can. But what if we've been having a really dry spell and I don't have any water in my barrel, but I still want to use my drip lines? No problem at all. What we do here is on the fourth line in, I'll actually attach my hose from my house. I'll run it into the system, keeping the rain barrel closed. I can open this valve up open up the valve to the drip line that goes directly to my tomatoes, turn on my hose, and it'll have plenty of water pressure to run right through here, water all of my garden. Uh, it's a pretty handy way to use my drip lines even when my rain barrel is empty. So now let's go ahead, check out the drip lines. 
All right, now to check out our drip line irrigation system here, we're gonna come to the tomatoes. You may recognize these tomatoes actually from an earlier video that we made, uh, where we showed you how to do the Florida weave as a support system to hold these plants up. If you wanna check out that video and plenty of other great videos that we've made, go to hobbyfarms.com. All right, for the drip line here, uh, you certainly could purchase uh, irrigation line. There's a number of different uh, styles available depending on um, what's gonna work best for your gardens. But why purchase what I already have at home, right? We could take a old hose just like this and repurpose it into a great drip line um, for pennies on the dollar, absolutely. So what we've done here is we've taken some of our old hoses, laid them out down the row, and then right along where the plants are at, we've just gone ahead and just simply drilled holes in it. Two holes, one on each side of the plant. Once you get your holes drilled, you're gonna to wanna to turn on the water, run it through the system, see how it works. Depending on the water pressure that you have coming off your barrel system is gonna determine how effective this is. With our system, we actually had to go through a second time and drill slightly larger holes uh, in our hose to allow the water to get all the way through to the end. We're running about 100 foot of hose uh, right now on these rows. So make sure you test the system, see how it works, and uh, just make some adjustments as you go. Now, let's go ahead, turn on the system, see how well it works today. Hey, that worked pretty well, right? So now what we've done next here is we've gone ahead and laid some mulch down over the drip line around our plants. And this is kind of dual purpose. With our tomatoes, of course, this is gonna protect the plants um, from splash up from the soil, which is uh, gonna keep them protected from disease and that sort of thing. But for our drip line, and this is gonna be relevant in any place in your garden, this is gonna hold that water down as it comes out of the hose, and it's gonna conserve the moisture in the soil, which is very, very important, especially in the hot summer days, that we do everything that we can to conserve the moisture in the soil. And you know what? It's just that easy. With a little bit of old gutter, a rain barrel, and some repurposed garden hose, we've created an awesome do-it-yourself drip line irrigation system for practically pennies. And you can do the same at your hobby farm as well. All right, thanks folks. Happy growing.